A faulty blowout preventer can only lead to one thing, this. There are warning signs that tell you about these problems. Know them. Know what they are and watch for them. They're leaks. Any leaks anywhere. And when you find one, know how to fix it. That's what we're going to go over now. We're going to fix a leaking blowout preventer. Most leaks are caused by seals that have either been damaged or that are worn out. Some leaks are caused by internal damage to the BOP. We'll go over the hydraulic pressuring system to give you an idea of how these leaks happen and where to watch for them. We're looking down on a drawing of a BOP that's cut away to show you the flow of hydraulic fluid. When the closed side of the preventer is pressured up, fluid flows through the end of the ram change closed piston into the back side of the operating piston and the ram change open piston. Pressure builds up in these chambers. When enough pressure is built up, something has to give. If the bonnet bolts were unscrewed, the pressure would push the bonnet open. But since the bonnet is bolted, the only thing free to move is the operating piston, so it closes. Now let's take a closer look at the seals that are holding this pressure. Each of the three pistons has a seal, the two ram change pistons and the operating piston. If any of them leak, you'll gradually lose your closing pressure. If you think that this might be happening, kill the pressure to the closed side and disconnect the hydraulic line from the open side of the preventer. Let the fluid drain off. Then pressure the closed side back up. If the fluid leaks from the open side and doesn't stop, that's pretty good indication that one of the piston seals is leaking. A leaking seal here at the tail rod would be easy enough to determine. You'll be able to see it leaking from the locking screw housing. Each of the three cylinders has two seals. One of them seals the closed side off from the face of the bonnet and the other seals the open side. A leak at any one of them will cause the fluid to leak at the face between the bonnet and the intermediate flange. Now for the open side. When it's pressured up, fluid flows through the ram change open piston and into the inside chamber. As pressure builds, the operating piston is pushed open. Now with pressure on this back side, you can see that the same piston seal seals both the open side and the closed side. Each of the cylinders has a seal that seals the pressure inside the intermediate flange. This seal seals the inside of the operating piston from the ram bore. If it leaks, the fluid would probably seep through this atmosphere vent, so keep an eye on it too. Well, once you've decided that you definitely have a leak and you've isolated it, you need to disassemble the bonnet to replace the seals. Our preventer's losing pressure and we have fluid flowing through the open port when the closed side's pressured up. So we figure that one of the piston seals has gone bad. Since we're going to have to disassemble the thing anyway, we'll go ahead and replace all the seals. First, we'll open the bonnets and remove the rams, just like we showed you in the inspection and maintenance program. Since we only have a leak in one of the bonnets, we're not going to mess with the other side except to inspect it and make sure that it's clean and the ram packers and bonnet seals are good. But the one that does leak will need a complete set of replacement seals and O-rings. So we checked to make sure that we had a complete set before we started. Now we make sure that our pressure is off before we start disassembly. Next, these cap screws are loosened. If they're too tight, you can use a cheater pipe to get them loose.
once they're all loose, rig up a hoist to lift the weight off the bonnet. Now we'll be using this hoist a lot because it's gonna make things easier. You can either rig up a portable hoist or use the one on the rig floor. Now go ahead and take all the cap screws out. When they're out, pry the bonnet back from the intermediate flange. Make sure that you catch these cylinders if they fall out. Look at the rust in there. That's because somebody used untreated water as a pressure fluid. If you're using water, mix a water-soluble oil in with it to keep it from happening. Hey, here's our problem in the closed cylinder. Look at that gouge. Must have been a rock or something in the pressuring fluid that got caught in between the piston and the cylinder. Well, we'll send it over to be honed out. Okay, let's finish the disassembly. We make it a standard practice to cut all the old seals in half. This helps identify them as old seals and they won't accidentally get reused. Now, if you cut this O-ring off of the operating cylinder, you can use the seal groove to pry it out. It usually sticks because of the tight fit of the piston seal. You have to pull it straight out or the sides of the piston will wedge against the cylinder. Don't try to take the cylinder and the piston out at the same time or you'll have a hard time getting them apart later. Next, we'll take the piston out. It's not too hard. Just turn the locking screw and it'll come. Might be a little tight, but it shouldn't give you too much trouble. The next thing we need to do is to take the intermediate flange off. We made a T-handle that'll fit into the pipe plug. You can either do this or stick some long bolts through the bonnet bolt holes and use a rope. Lift the weight of the intermediate flange off the ram change pistons so that you can unscrew them. You should have a wrench like this one around someplace. If you don't have one and you have to use some other kind of wrench, be careful not to damage the piston shaft don't use wrenches on any other part of the shaft except this area here. Any little burrs will cut the O-ring seal that seals the piston shaft and it'll leak. They shouldn't be very tight so you won't have any trouble with them. Once they're loose, take them out of the intermediate flange. Take a look at the difference in these pistons. The threads on one are larger than on the other. That's so that you don't get them mixed up and in the wrong holes. When you're replacing seals, don't forget to cut the old ones in half. Go ahead and take all of them off at the same time. Now don't forget about the seals inside of the bonnet and intermediate flange. This connecting rod seal is held in by a retainer ring. It's not very hard to get out. There's an O-ring seal back in there too. And there's one in both change piston ports. 
The last one in the intermediate flange is the plastic packer ring. The easiest way to get it out is to poke it out from the plug hole. You'll have to take the packer nut and check valve out, then just push down with the screwdriver and grab it from inside. Now the only seals in the bonnet area are these two that seal the tail rod. Just pull this one out with a screwdriver. O-ring's easy too. Well, it looks like we've got it all apart. Now we'll have to clean all the parts up. Watch out for any more damage while you're cleaning. Clean everything up real good. The cleaner all this is, the easier it's gonna be to reassemble it later. You might even have to use a fine sandpaper or emery cloth to get the parts clean, if your BOP is as dirty as this one is. Just be sure that everything is clean and there's not any more damage. Okay, now separate all of your new seals and make sure that they're all here. Make sure that you know which seals go where. Okay, let's replace the seals and get on with the reassembly. All of these seals should be greased with a light grease or oil before they're installed. Let's start with the tail rod seal. It has to go in the right way or it'll leak. Put it in so that the lip faces the piston. It fits into a recessed area in the bonnet, so you'll have to bend it and poke it with the screwdriver to get it in. Fits a little loose right now, but after the tail rod's been stuck through it, it'll fit tighter. Now put the wiping ring in. It fits into a recess just behind the tail rod seal. Next, we'll install the seals in the intermediate flange. The new operating piston O-ring should be dipped in oil, then placed in the first small groove here. Okay. The plastic packing ring is next. You'll have to hammer it a little to press the edges closer together, otherwise it won't fit into its recess. The energizing ring fits over the seal like this. Now bend it like this. And place it into the recess. It's not gonna be very easy. In fact, you might have to hammer it a little bit more. Press it into place with your fingers as far as you can. Then use a hammer to tap it in the rest of the way. Now take a close look at the check valve to make sure that it works. Then screw it into its place in the intermediate flange. Well, the last seal to go here is this connecting rod seal ring. It goes in with the lip facing you. The new one might be a little different from the old one. So don't be surprised if it's not exactly the same. This one's got a face plate that goes in front of the seal. Then a snap ring to hold them in. Make sure that it's in good. After these seals are in, lift the flange up to about the height of the preventer with the hoist. Now oil the two change piston seals and install them. Remember that we talked about how the ram change closed piston and the ram change open piston are different? Well, make sure that you put the right ones in the right holes. The closed piston is marked here on the wrench area. It goes on the closed side of the preventer. 
oil the piston shaft and just slide it into its hole. Do the same with the open piston. And don't forget to put the O-rings on the piston heads. There's also two small O-rings that go in the thread ends. Don't forget them. Well, we're about ready to screw the pistons into the body. Put a little grease on the threads to get them started. Once they're lined up and started, you should be able to screw them up by hand. Now get them pretty tight. They don't have to be torqued down, but they shouldn't be loose either. Next, the operating piston. Don't forget to put the seal on the piston. Okay, remember the damaged cylinder we found earlier? We had it honed out, but I don't think it's good enough to use, so we'll replace it with a new one. If we really had to have this BOP to get back to drilling and we didn't have a new cylinder, we'd probably go ahead and reassemble the BOP with the old one in place and put a new one on order, but we'd do this strictly as a last resort until a new one could be installed. Now there are two seals on the chain cylinders. One for the intermediate flange. It's the smaller one. The other one is for the bonnet. It's the larger of the two. A little oil inside the cylinder and over the seal will make them easier to slip on. Now put the first seal on the operating cylinder and a little oil inside. The oil will help make the cylinder seat easier. You'll probably have to use a rope sling to get the operating cylinder in place. It's pretty heavy. and you'll need to use a hammer and a wooden block to get it pushed all the way up. It's not going to be easy. Now put the other operating cylinder seal on. Each of the bonnet bolts should have a little O-ring, too. This will help keep the bolts from falling out while you work on the preventer. Lift the bonnet into place. Remember that the bonnet has to seal over three seals, the two back seals on the chain cylinders and the back seal on the operating cylinder, so it'll probably give you a hard time, too. Once it's started over the seals, you'll be able to use the cap screws to pull it up the rest of the way. Tighten all the screws a little at a time. You have to be careful to make sure that it's pulled on evenly. The best way to do it is to tighten this one a little, then this one, this one, then this one. Keep doing this until all of them are tight. Then go back and get them as tight as you can with a cheater pipe. Next, put some plastic packing material in the emergency seal.
Don't pack it in. But tighten the packer nut down until you'll feel it contact the plastic packer. This way, if your main seal begins to leak, you can immediately tighten some of that packing material into the emergency seal. You don't have to go running around looking for plastic packing material while your seal leaks. That just about does it for the reassembly. Of course, we checked our ram packers to make sure that they're good and the bonnet seal too. Well, the only thing left to do is replace the ram and seal her back up. Before you try to seal it, remove this little valve. It's the hydraulic bleeder valve. Apply pressure to your closed side and wait until fluid is forced through the hole. This pushes all the air up out of the lines and fills all the chambers up with fluid. Now replace it and we can seal them back up. Do it like we explained in the inspection and maintenance section. Make sure that all the bonnet bolts are as tight as you can get them. If you have a way to measure your torque, refer to your Cameron manual for the proper torque for your preventer. Check with the 5,000 cinch feeler gauge to make sure that the bonnet's seated right. Then pressure the preventer up for at least 15 minutes to make sure that your new seals aren't leaking. Now here's a few things that we'd like for you to think about. If a leak is discovered in the hydraulic portion of your preventer, should all the seals be replaced? or only the seal that's leaking. Once a bonnet has been taken apart, all of the seals in that bonnet should be replaced, but it won't be necessary to replace the seals in the other bonnet if it's not leaking. You should also go ahead and check the ram packers and bonnet seals on both sides while the bonnet is open. Where are the five places to check for seal leaks? At the manual lock housing, the bonnet and intermediate flange facings, the intermediate flange and body facings, the atmosphere vent on the intermediate flange, and the open and close hydraulic line connections. If water is used as a hydraulic fluid, what should be done to it first? It should be treated with a water-soluble oil to help retard rusting and corrosion. Remember what our BOP looked like when we disassembled it. What are the differences in the ram change open piston and ram change closed piston? The pressure outlet on the open piston is behind the piston on the shaft, while the outlet for the closed piston is in the top of the piston. The threads that screw into the body are different sizes, too. What about the two main seals on the operating piston? Do you remember how they go in? There's a lip on both the tail rod seal and the connecting rod seal. In both cases, the lip faces the preventer body, and the flat side faces away from the preventer. Do you remember about the bleeder valve? It's located on the bonnet and is for forcing all of the air out of the hydraulic system. You should bleed the system just before sealing the bonnets back up. You should seal it back up using the procedure described in the inspection and maintenance portion of the series. Now there's a little booklet that accompanies this tape. It's got some questions in the back that we'd like for you to answer. Turn the answer sheet in when you're finished, but keep the booklet for future reference and be on the lookout for leaking seals.